Well, I told you I would make a video when I got done what I had in mind. <coughs> this is what I had in mind. Just it. Uh, got a little bit of a tomato garden with some sunflowers and uh, some yellow squash and a raspberry plant from Stark Brothers and a free-range watermelon that came up by itself. And I have finished the chicken coop, and my chickens are watching me, trying to figure out, what did Mama do? Has she been over there working on that? There's my roosters, and there's my little baby chickens. And they, they, they are definitely losing their feathers for summer. And uh, this is what it looks like. Um, so what I've done is I have folded the chicken wire, okay, and screwed it down over top. Dirt, Josh. And, and the reason why you do that is to keep the predators from being able to pull up the the roof. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I've already had one try to get in right there. So, I mean, it's a good thing I did what I did with the retaining block and, and digging down the fence down into the ground. But this is what I was planning on doing, okay, is putting some tomatoes here straight into the ground, see how they do. A couple sunflowers, you know, I don't think they're going to make it. They're kind of iffy on making it. Um, this is a, one of the watermelons that came up in my corn over there. So it, it was totally free range from last year. Uh, everything else seems to be doing okay. The problem I'm having is if you notice my peach tree, I have no peaches on my peach tree. But what I do have is little pieces of peaches out in the middle of the yard. See? Right there. So that tells me the squirrel have been out here and done took them all. Um, so, since we know that, bad on me this year, but next year we'll cover it with a cloth. Um, my cabbage didn't come up at all. Hmm. I got two that are trying, but they didn't come up at all. Right. And my green peppers, eh, they're trying, but I, I don't know if they're going to come up at all. Uh, this yellow squash seems to be doing okay, but I notice that the leaves are kind of turning yellow. So I don't know what's causing that. I'll have to do some research. Uh, my lemon tree did come back. And my marigolds come back. You can see them in there mixed in with the lamb's quarter. I mean, I've been in here chopping this down and pulling it out and feeding it to the chickens and eating some of it. And and uh, it's really, this is really good, by the way. This is really good in a salad. Or you cook it up like spinach. I cook it up like spinach and add it to my eggs. It's really, really good. Uh, my garlic is blooming. I don't know if you've ever seen garlic bloom, but this is elephant garlic, and it is blooming. And uh, we just let them do what they do in this bed. I mean, I, I come in and I weed it every now and then, but it pretty much does what it wants. As you can see, this lamb's quarter is all over inside my, inside my corn bed here. And I've got another watermelon right there. I think I'm going to leave it because it, it seems to be doing okay, even though it's in with the corn. I'm going to leave it. Uh, I planted a elderberry here, and it's coming up. This was also from Stark Brothers. Um, I've had absolutely no problems with any of the trees I bought from Stark Brothers. I just make sure uh, I research for my area and my zone whether or not uh, is compatible with my zone. Now this is this is something else right here. This is poke. Now as you can see the berries are starting to come in on this poke tree. 
and you see I'm very careful with this now if you break this stem right here it has like a milky sap and if you're not careful you can burn yourself on it now in order to eat poke it's kind of like some cactuses you have to cook it twice what I mean by that is you boil it rinse it off right drain all the liquid off rinse it off boil it a second time rinse it off again and then the third time you boil it you can eat it okay and and it is very good for you um has a lot of nutritional value in it uh but it also has a lot of tannins in it so that's why you have to boil it twice and if you don't boil it twice um, you could poison yourself. So make sure if you are eating poke that you do boil it twice. Boil it, rinse it in cold water, boil it a second time, rinse it again, then boil it a third time. Okay. Um, the berries, the berries are highly toxic. If you have young children, you obviously do not want poke around because the berries will turn bright purple and look edible and children have a tendency to put anything that looks like candy in their mouth and then you are on your way to the emergency room uh, my lettuce is doing very well as you can see i've been in here kind of taking a little bit here and there and my kale gotta love japanese beetles my kale is being an eight slam up okay and if anybody's got an idea how to fix that, please let me know. I have tried everything that I can know naturally, and I do not want to put pesticides on my food. So um, just let me know. And uh, I'm really proud of that. Um, that was all done with reclaimed wood. Uh, the fencing and the roofing, obviously, I had to buy. The nails and the screws, obviously, I had to buy. But uh, the wood and all of that and the retaining blocks I got for free. Um, so, this is what you can do. I mean, I had some of this, these hasp and handles. I had some of that uh, just in odds and ends that I had from before. And as you can see, it's not perfect. I mean, you know, it's crooked. And, and uh, my buddy told me, he says, you're supposed to put them straight on, you know, not stacked on top of each other. And Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect, folks. It, it can be imperfect. Uh, but let me take you back here. Let's walk back here, okay? Uh, you see, this is my celery and, and my strawberries. They're doing fairly well, though my celery seems to be turning yellow. My dill is going crazy. Uh, it's just going crazy. So is my oregano and uh, my parsley, my chives. My chives are everywhere. My basil's coming up. Here's another Stark Brother tree. Like I said, every one that I bought, seems to do all right but i i do research and make sure that they're good for my zone um my onions that i bought from gurneys yeah i've got one that really came up and a couple that are trying my pole beans from last year they're coming up very well i'm gonna have to get out here and put some steaks so that they have something to grab onto my turnips Eh, they're trying. They are trying. My rhubarb, though, I've got one little teeny little seedling right there. And one right there. All the rest hadn't come up. So I don't know if something's been in here eating on it. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. You know, that's one of those where you go, I don't know. Uh, There's my daddy's maple tree. I took a cutting off of uh, a maple tree that my daddy loved and 
planted it. It was planted right there, but I moved it over here because it was getting too much sun, and so it was it was burning it. So maple trees like a lot of water, and I do get a lot of water in this corner. So I figured this would be perfect for it. This is an elderberry tree. This is a Japanese type of elderberry tree. And it hasn't started blooming yet. It's normally a late bloomer. It normally blooms in fall. So we'll see. We'll see what it does this year. Here's another elderberry tree. Also a different type. And it's, it's actually thrown up another baby tree right beside it. And uh, it's trying to bloom. So we'll see get anything off of that got a holly tree right here which I don't know if that's gonna make it and what I tell you about the lambs quarters right lambs quarters lambs quarters they're all over the place look at this they're all over the place right I got, the, I got a tomato plant right here now, I bought this tomato plant. This is supposed to be a Whopper improved tomato. So, we'll see. We'll see about that one. Uh, that one died. Well, my barley's trying to come up. My sweet potato's trying to come up. Got one right there. One right there with a bunch of little tomatoes from last year, free range. This one, this one seems to be doing a little bit better. That's my dandelion. I keep that um, just to take a couple of the leaves and sometimes some of the blossoms. That's a free range tomato from last year. This is supposed to be Rutgers. I haven't seen but one come up. And I don't know if it's going to make it. These are the Yukon Gold. They are, uh, these are my potatoes. All along here are my potatoes. And if you're wondering, these barrels, were the barrels that were at work, that they were going to throw away, that had um, the extreme blue... Uh, windshield washer fluid in it so since I knew what was in it I went ahead and scrubbed them down let them sit for about two months just in the weather and then uh, scrubbed them down again and then last year um, I filled them with dirt and 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 grew uh, a couple tomatoes in it and some sweet potatoes. And uh, the sweet potatoes did not do well. Um, so we're hoping this year maybe we'll get a better idea. But the tomato, the potatoes this year, shoo! I'm hoping I don't, I don't get all greens and no potatoes, right? We'll see. Now this right here is bamboo. Now bamboo, a lot of people don't know, bamboo is native to North Carolina. Um, and it's edible. So, what you do is you drag it off. Let's see if I can do this. You see this part in the side? You can take that and chop it up just like that white part. You could chop that up and eat it. It's edible. I don't like it, so I don't eat it. But I do try and keep it down because once you have um, bamboo in your yard, it just wants to come up everywhere. I mean, everywhere, right? It's a, it's a constant thing. So that's what I got. Oh, look at here. I got another elderberry. Okay, there. That's a free-range elderberry right there. We'll leave that alone. 
I also got a bunch of free range poison ivy. See that? That's poison ivy for those that don't know. And that's a that's a nope. That's a nope weed. In order to get that up, you gotta dig that up by the root. And that's what I got going on. My pool doesn't turn green. I gotta get some shot to it. Uh It, it just it it's been it's been it's been so cold and so much trash has been flying into it that I haven't been able to get out here and work with it. But that's what I got going. See here, I got the I got, uh, this another lettuce. It's a different type of lettuce. This this here just come up on its own. A different type of lettuce. My blueberries are about ready to come in. Got a couple of blueberry trees here. I got some tomatoes coming in right there. I don't know if you can see them. They're down in there right there. A whole bunch of them coming in. I got this stand right here. I like this stand. It just snaps together. I got that off of Amazon. So if you look up tomato cages, you'll find it. It's about 50 bucks. But uh, it comes with all these little clips and uh, a bunch of these little sticks here. And they're, they're, they're pretty tall. Uh, my blackberry doing all right. This is my other sunflower. This is my mammoth sunflower. You see how big the leaves will get. All right. You wonder what I'm doing. I'm checking for aphids because they like to come in and eat these all down. And uh, I got a yellow squash that's going to come right up and grow right up there. I got another blueberry here. That I grew from uh, a little little blueberry seed. If I remember right, that come off of that one over there. Got one right. I got a blueberry tree right there. And over here, we got the carrots going. This is not hard to do, folks. You can do this. Yeah, that's my carrots. That's a big carrot coming in right there. I'm hoping these go to seed. And uh, it looks like that's exactly what's getting ready to happen here. Because these little baby carrots didn't make it. So I'm hoping these go to seed. And uh, seed that out. This is a different type of blueberry. For those that don't know, you got to have two different types of blueberry in order to have blueberry. Look at here. i got a free range of something. And that is basil. That's basil. That right there is either a cucumber or a squash. I don't know which. Mm -hmm. Here's another different type of blueberry. See here? See how they're starting to turn color? Now they'll turn a darker blue and a darker purple right before they're ready to be picked. And you can tell, it's going to sound funny, but you can tell that the blueberries are ready to pick when you start seeing the little birds come flying close by. Okay? Uh, they won't mess with them until they're about ready to be picked. And then suddenly they'll come when they see one or two that are ready to be picked, they'll be on it. Right? So when you start seeing little birds starting to pay attention to your blueberry trees, that's when you either got to cover them up, right, or uh, pick them. I like to cover them up and let them, let them sit for a couple more days. That way they turn full black. But uh, that's up to you what you do. Uh, this is not hard, folks. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about. My co-worker, I gave my co-worker some of my chicken's eggs, right? And it wasn't very many. I mean, I gave him a dozen, right? And his wife had a fit. And the reason his wife had a fit is because my chickens lay green, blue, and brown eggs. It's because I have two Easter eggers and two sapphire gems. 
So the two Easter eggs are the one stripes. Right there, that's stripes. It's a full blooded Americana Easter egg. Dot, who's the other brown one right there, she's a mix. So Dot lays the green eggs. Stripes lays the blue eggs. And my sapphire gems, which is a gray one right there, that one's trouble. <laughs> that one's trouble, that one's Penelope. And you can tell it's trouble because when she turns the other way, you'll see she's got two little black spots. What you doing? What you doing, trouble? What you doing, trouble? Turn around so people can see the other side. See those two little black spots? <laughs> That's trouble. And the reason she called trouble is when she was a little, a little chick, she kept getting out of the brooder pen and getting getting chased by the dog in the house. So she was just trouble. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, so my co-worker's wife had a fit because she kept trying to wash the eggs and wash the coloring off the eggs. And so the shells would break. So this is for all you city folks. Alright. All the people that are born in the city, right? I'm in the city, I'm in the suburbs. Right? I got I got neighbors all around me. I got a little little three fourths of an acre here. So I'm in the city. Alright? I did all this in the city. You can do it too. If you got the property, you can do it. Just takes a little bit of hard work. But if you have chickens, your chickens naturally will lay brown eggs, not white eggs. Now, the reason why the eggs in the store are white is because they bleach them. Yes, I said that right. They bleach those eggs. And the chickens that are laying those eggs are made specifically to lay those type of eggs. Now, you can get a long, you can get a long, I believe it's called a longhorn uh, chicken. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. I believe it's called a longhorn chicken. But those chickens do lay pale white eggs. But most of those chickens mature in six weeks. And they only live about a year and a half. So they're not, they're not natural chickens. They, they, they have been bred specifically um, to live six months to a year, lay all their eggs by the time they're a year old. Shush! And then uh, they go on your dinner plate. That's what they're bred for. So they, they, they have that life cycle. Whereas my chickens, typically uh, normal uh, farm chickens, will lay brown eggs. Unless you have, like I do, Easter eggers. And then they'll lay colored eggs. And it can range anywhere from light blue all the way up to dark green. Uh, just depending on uh, the pigment in the chicken. That's up to the chicken. Uh, once a chicken starts laying a specific color egg, that's a color egg she's going to lay all her life. Um, you can... You can bleach your eggs <laughs> uh, if you want. I'm, I'm sorry, I like my eggs fresh off of my chicken. Okay? So, my point is, is that the white eggs that you get in the store they're not good for you okay um, are they edible yes but a lot of the nutrients have been stripped out of them okay so if you put one of my eggs and you crack it open beside a white egg and you crack that open you'll see the difference my eggs come out kind of 
the, the yolk is kind of an orange color. Whereas the eggs you get out of the store will come out like a light yellow color. That does not mean that my eggs are bad. It means that that light yellow color egg that you're getting from the store is probably three weeks old. I say that because what they do with those eggs is they wash them. They stack them up on trays. You can look this up if you think I'm lying. They stack them up on trays. Then they put those trays into a refrigerator. And then a truck comes and picks them up. And that truck will go and take it to wherever it's got to go for processing. So it goes to a processing plant and is separated by size, which normally takes another week. Then it goes back into another refrigerated truck to go to the store. So normally, the, by the time the eggs reach the store, they're normally two to three weeks old. Now, sometimes you get them a week and a half to two weeks old because you're closer to uh, the big plants that do the eggs. Uh, but most of them are two to three weeks old when they reach the grocery store, which is why they have to be kept refrigerated. My eggs, I can take my eggs out from underneath my hand, put them up on my kitchen table, and they're good for two weeks. I don't have to do anything. Now, if I want to keep them longer than two weeks, I can use mineral oil, cover them in mineral oil, and they're good for three to six months. I don't like to go more than two weeks on my eggs, though. I rotate my eggs out. As you can see how fat my dog is, he gets two eggs a day. Doesn't seem to be bothering him eating the colored eggs. Doesn't seem to be bothering me eating the colored eggs. So this is for your city folk. If, if you have a choice between colored eggs or white eggs, take the colored eggs. The colored eggs normally are from a farm-raised chicken. And... Uh, it's got a lot more vitamins and minerals in it than that white egg. That white egg is from a GMO chicken. I, I just had to address that because I, I could not believe my co-worker when he said, well, my wife tried to wash all the coloring off and she couldn't get the coloring off and she broke the eggs trying to wash the color off. I... I I had never heard anything like that before. And I guess it's just because I've been around farm animals off and on all my life that I knew that farm-raised chickens laid brown eggs and that some of them laid colored eggs. Um, but I wanted to pass that knowledge on to you city folk. Uh, I say city folk because, like I said, I live in the city, but uh, obviously she really from the city and really has no clue about eggs. Uh, so you tell me what you think about my chicken coop. I know it's not perfect. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job for doing it by myself. And I uh, got, got the little garden bed beside it. And that's what I had in mind. And uh, as you can tell, I'm just going like mad. All right, well, we're going to let you go, and I'm sorry this took so long to get back up about this about this chicken coop. But uh, we're going to let y'all go now. You, as you can see, if you look at my dog, my chickens are about the same height as my dog. So that's why they needed more room. <laughs> uh, y'all have a blessed day. Bicycle.